welcome back, beloved ones, to another episode of Digging Deeper. And as always, thank you for tuning in today. We're heading down the home stretch in our study of Psalm 16. And in the verses we're going to look at in this episode, we're going to see David reflect on the Lord's counsel in his life and the Lord's presence to guide him and protect him and the impact that that has. And so let's just start right here with verse 7, Psalm 16. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. I have set the Lord continually before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will dwell securely. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. Well, let's just start right here with verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. We've seen this term bless before. It has with it the idea to kneel down in praiseworthy adoration. I will kneel down in praiseworthy adoration before the Lord who has counseled me. Now, anytime the Lord counsels us and guides us and directs us in the way that we should go, that's cause to bless him. That's cause to kneel down before him in praiseworthy adoration. But David here seems to have a particular time in mind, a particular scenario in mind. In Hebrew poetry, the second line often advances the thought of the first. So the first line here, I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. The second line advances that thought. Indeed, he says, my mind instructs me in the night. David is thinking about the nighttime. And we know what that time is like. The day's done. The activities are over. You're left to think about all that happened that day and all you will have to deal with tomorrow. And David says, my mind my innermost being instructs me in the night. It's interesting, this word instruct, in, in the particular Hebrew form we find it, really has with it the idea of correct. In what way would David need correcting in the night? In what way would he need a course correction? Well, at night, instead of getting carried off with all the worry and anxiety that often comes, he was corrected to focus in on how the Lord has counseled him. He was corrected to focus in on the Lord's direction and guidance. You might remember over in Psalm 1, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Well, I think that's what David was doing here. If he has a particular night in mind or just the nighttime in general, his innermost being corrected him. And I think it corrected him in this way to focus in on the counsel of the Lord. Well, we've, we've been there. We've all had those long nights when we can't sleep, we're worried, we're anxious about what's happened and what might happen next. What we need is to focus in on the Lord's counsel. And beloved ones, fortunately, we have that. We have God's word. And so we can go to the Lord at any time. We can go to the Lord's word at any time. And in particular, in the middle of the night and ask, what is the Lord's word? declare to us? What counsel and guidance has the Lord given us in some particular area where we are worried? Just like David could look to the Lord's counsel in the middle of the night, we can do the same thing. And as the Lord counsels us and guides us, we will find ourselves proclaiming along with David, I will bless the Lord. I will kneel down in praiseworthy adoration before the Lord who has counseled me. Now, in verse 8, David continues, I have set the Lord continually before me. 
here again, I think, is a picture of where is David's trust in dependency. So verse 7, he looks to the Lord's counsel in the middle of the night. Verse 8, he trusts in and depends on the Lord's presence before him and at his right hand. You know, when you think of King David, he had armies to go before him and armies to stand beside him. But here we see in this psalm, David declares, I've set the Lord continually before me. In other words, it is in the Lord and the Lord alone that David trusts. It really is a bit of a, a reminder all the way back to verse 1, where David said, Preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you, and you are my Lord, and you are my good. There's no one else to whom David would look to preserve him. And here David says, I've set the Lord continually before me. His trust in all things is in the Lord. You know, over in Hebrews 12, we get a similar instruction or point of emphasis for all believers. Run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The idea there is we aren't looking anywhere else but to him and to him alone. And I think that's what David's saying here at the beginning of verse 8. I have set the Lord continually before me. David goes on at the end of verse 8, because the Lord is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. The right hand was often thought of figuratively as the place of power the place where there was security and strength over the enemy. Well, David knows that the Lord is his strength and security and power. Any victory for David is because the Lord's at his right hand. It's the Lord who wins the battles. It's the Lord who overcomes the enemies. It's the Lord who makes it such that David will not be overcome and shaken. Charles Spurgeon, I enjoy reading him. He said of verse 8 that the Lord here is depicted as the champion that goes before us and the protector who stands beside us. In fact, Spurgeon said, and I'm quoting here, to trust in the Lord as our champion and guard is the privilege of every saint. Well, that's what David's reflecting on here in this psalm. Continuing on to verse 9, therefore, since the Lord counsels me, since it's the Lord who guides me in the middle of the night, since the Lord is continually before me, since the Lord is my power and strength so that I will not be shaken, here's the impact, therefore, my heart is glad. And so here we have an emphasis on inner joy. Inner joy. Then he goes on to say, and my glory rejoices. How are we to think about this? What does this mean, my glory rejoices? Well, we can use scripture to interpret scripture here because over in Acts chapter 2, Peter's going to quote these verses, and we're going to look at them next week. But when Peter quotes these verses, he quotes it like this, my tongue rejoices. And so we could talk about this as not just outer joy, but expressed joy. Expressed joy. And so here's the result. When we know the Lord's counsel in the middle of the night when we're worried and anxious, the Lord comes along and guides us and directs us through his word. We have the Lord continually before us as our champion. He's beside us to protect us and, and guard us. That brings to us inner joy. 
and puts a praiseworthy song on our lips as expressed joy. At the end of verse 9, David says, My flesh also will dwell securely. That is to say, my life is safe in the Lord. Why? Well, because of all we have seen so far, to be sure, but also because of what David says next. My life is secure. I will dwell securely. Why? For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. Sheol here is the place of the dead. You will not abandon my soul to the place of the dead, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. I think what David's getting at here in his own life is that David's life now and David's life for eternity dwells securely in the Lord's hands. And you know what, beloved ones? The same is true for all believers. Our lives right now and throughout all of eternity dwell securely in the Lord's hands. He will not abandon us. Now, there's something interesting going on here in verse 10, and you may have already seen it. This term, Holy One, here is capitalized. Well, why exactly is that? Why is it capitalized? Well, there's a good reason for it. And David says here, you will not allow your Holy One to undergo decay. But the truth of the matter is, David did die. And he was put in the ground, and his body did decay. So how is it he can say here, you will not allow your Holy One to undergo decay? Well, could it be that David's talking about more than just himself here? He's talking about someone else when he's talking about your Holy One. Well, in fact, David is talking about someone else here. And you can probably guess who it is. But to find out for sure... You're going to have to tune in next week. So, beloved ones, look to the Lord this week. He has everything we need. He counsels us. He guides us. He directs us. He protects. He guards. He goes before us. He's at our right hand so that we will not be overcome. Our lives are secure in Him. And so I hope that's an encouragement for you. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you with praiseworthy adoration and say thank you for giving us your counsel. What a blessing it is that we have your word to guide us in truth and your spirit to give us wisdom and understanding. Thank you for going before us, for being our strength and our protector. What joy it brings to our hearts and our lips to know that our lives now and forever dwell securely with you. Father, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom the promises and blessings of these verses are ultimately fulfilled. And it is in his name we pray. Amen.